Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a series of images and I'm going to give you some tips to improve your photography. Now a lot of these issues that we're going to see in these images are really easy to fix. And one of the cool things with this video is I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to fix them. However, a lot of people aren't going to probably like my answer because it's not always the easy way. All right, so we're gonna start off with this image, and this is the number one issue with beginning photographers, and this is what we call poor exposure. In this image, we can see this cat here. This is what we're calling blowing out or overexposing the highlights, meaning that it's too bright. We can also see it over here. The problem with this is even if you shoot raw, if you blow out a highlight so much that there's no detail, even raw cannot bring it back. So when you're exposing your images, you need to always make sure that you're holding highlight detail. You would actually be better off having this image be a little bit dark than a little bit hot. Hot meaning too bright in your highlight areas. Because if you bring back highlight areas and there's no detail, it just turns this weird color of gray and it doesn't look good. And I have an image later on here where I can show you the image is actually a very pretty image, but they darken the sky up too much and it's getting that gray effect. To fix this, most people aren't gonna like the answer. When you are taking photographs, nobody wants to shoot in manual because it's difficult to learn. But the reason that most pros shoot in manual, most photographers that know what they're doing is because you have ultimate control over your image. The camera doesn't understand what you're trying to photograph. It tries to take a general picture. It analyzes the image with numbers and gives you an exposure. I have found that about 75% of the time, the meter on the camera is not accurate and sometimes really far off and not accurate and you get this weird variance in exposures. The best thing that you can do as a photographer is have consistent good exposures. It solves all kinds of issues that you're gonna run into and it makes your life easier when toning. I see all these stupid videos where learn how to cor color correct your image and color correction isn't the image. The image is just so dark and so underexposed or so overexposed that the image is ruined because the initial exposure in the camera was bad. So it's not a matter of this amazing technique in Photoshop or Lightroom. It has nothing to do with that. Hold your highlight values. And the reason we shoot in manual is because even though your meter tells you it's the correct exposure, you can always look on the back of your camera. I have a highlight alert. So mine would blink in an area if I overexpose the highlight and that way I can stop it down. All right, let's go to this next image. So this isn't necessarily specifically with this image, but we do start to see in this image, see right here where we've lost highlight detail and they've darkened it and it starts to just turn gray. And we have this gray effect all over this image. So this was a backlit image and the highlight areas, they tried to darken it to stop it down. In most of these cases, I would tell people just to leave it blown out. It's actually gonna look better than this gray. Now, they've done some funky coloring and matte effects and some color grading on this image. It doesn't look too bad. The issue in this image is actually not really as much the exposure, it's the location. When you are photographing in nature, especially with dead leaves, you get something called high key, meaning it's really contrasting, meaning your brights are very bright, and your darks are very dark. There's no subtle gradation of the tone of values from white to black. So you're getting these really bright areas and these really contrasty areas. The issue with this is this is our subject, but there's so much contrast and stuff going on in this area, it detracts from the image here. We wanna watch that we don't get high key areas in backgrounds that can be distracting from our subject. 
All right, black dogs are difficult to photograph, and this is actually not too bad of a photograph. The ability here is a camera being able to hold black and white in one image. So we're looking at extremes, the dark values and the extremely bright values. Since we focused on the dog, camera or a sensor is going to hold detail in focused areas better than in out of focus areas. And now obviously the person set the dog down here in front of these flowers because they think it looks pretty, but the issue is they're white. In the camera, because it's out of focus here and it's focused on the dog, it's gonna have a difficult time holding that. So what we have is distracting part of an image that should have been beautiful. Your eye naturally goes to the brightest part of an image. And in this case, it's this big white spot. And then it will bounce up here and then your eye will bounce back down here naturally because it's always gonna look at the brightest part of an image. So in this case, even though it was pretty, because it's a strong contrast difference, we want to stay away from unimportant areas that are much brighter than our subject because it leads our eye away from the image. This image, we have a whole bunch of different issues in this image. So the person came in here and we have some nice modeling of light. Once again, remember I said you need to expose for the highlight. Now we've lost highlight detail here, here and here. So this image is dramatically overexposed, meaning in this areas. Now this would cause the area of the face to get darker. If that's not something that you want, you just need to wait to a different time of day when the lighting is better. Now people don't want to hear that. They're like, oh, I don't have time to sit there and wait. Well, if you want a good image, you need to make sure that you're there at the right time of day, the light is right, everything is right. That's really going to improve your image. The second part of this image that's distracting is the background. So we have this vertical line, this vertical line, this vertical line, and this vertical line. So because we have all these highlights and shadows, we've got a line here, we've got a line here. And this background, these strong vertical lines are distracting to this image. That's something that you need to watch for. So when I teach my beginning class, my very first class, the first thing I have students do is is to try to have clean backgrounds and backgrounds that aren't distracting. So here's another one of the same person it looks like. Same thing here, where just the light is so distracting because it's so overexposed. It just doesn't work for this type of an image. So we have this picture of this woman here, and we've got some funky, odd colors. So not only do you need to get a good exposure, and this is not a good exposure because we can see it's overexposed here, here, and here. And part of the reason this is overexposed because this image is actually out of focus. If this image was in focus, it would hold the highlight values better, but it's an out of focus image and that's causing a lot of problems. Plus we have a really weird color balance on this image. If you are not shooting raw, you need to make sure that you are constantly making sure your white balance is good. Now you can stick your camera on an auto white balance, but if your auto white balance is off, you do need to adjust it if you're shooting JPEG images because you can't easily go back in and fix it. Now, if you're shooting a raw image, I would just leave it on auto white balance because you can easily go in in post production and change your color balance and you have a lot of adjustability there. But you need to make sure here, once again, the most important thing is to actually take an image that's in focus. Look, if you don't shoot something in focus, it's not worth using. We've got a series of a few images of this person here and we got some that we're gonna see towards the end, but this is just a simple one. And this is cutting off appendages, meaning at the wrist, at the elbow, at the knee, and in this case, the foot. You never cut off at appendages, so you never cut off feet, you never cut off at the knee. You can cut off here, you can cut off in certain areas, but you don't cut off the fingers, you don't cut off the rest, and you don't cut off someone at the elbow, meaning you don't crop it out. And I'll show you another one with an arm here in a little bit. So this isn't gonna be the worst thing that we're gonna see in all of our photographs. Once again, we have this cut off the wrong area of an image right through the leg. It looks weird. You would want to crop this up here, not down here. It looks bad. So in photography, one of the things we are trying to achieve is movement 
through an image. This is important. Movement through an image. And in this image, we're only looking through the short side, meaning that the subject is here and it's only looking through this direction. We've got all this here that really isn't being used because our subject is looking this way. We follow that line. We look this way and we never really come back. So this is what we call dead space over here, space that isn't being used. So this image would be much better if our subject was over here and then she was looking through the image. That's something that we're trying to do. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have an image where you do look through the short side. There are some situations where it does work, but in an image like this, we've got what we call dead space back here that we're not using or benefiting from for our image, and we're looking through that short side. So we have this simple picture of this goat. Looks like somebody tried to do a little frame, a shoot through a window within a window. The issue here, once again, you have, they have placed themselves on the bad side to take a photograph. This is what we call backlit. So notice this goat is in shade and it's creating this kind of lighting effect, which some people might like. The problem is in this image, it's not helping. The reason why is because of the high key grass in trees. Remember I said before that high key effect that you get in a natural environment can be distracting. Leaves have a sheen on them and they overexpose really easy. We can see it's happening here on the wood. This is partly because to get the exposure in the shadow of the goat, you actually need to overexpose it. So in that sense, they did it correctly. The problem is the background being overexposed creates this high key effect and it's just busy and distracting back there. So we wanna clean up that image. This is an interesting image because the photograph itself is actually done pretty well. The issue here is the toning. Um, the composition is not the greatest, but it's the toning here. And the main thing is the level of contrast. Our contrast is way too strong. What it's happening here and here, and especially in here, it's really darkening and muddying. I call this blocking where it looks more two dimensional. It looks like, like a big flat area where it's starting to lose its tonal range because you're increasing the contrast. We have a, a, a black gentleman who's wearing darker clothes against white. We should use this contrast to make him pop, but they've darkened this and increased the contrast so much that it's all starting to blend together. I think this would be a much stronger image if this was just toned better. Now in Photoshop, you can use the info palette to check your highlight values to make sure that they're toned well. So if you wanna watch a video on how to read an image and tell if the value is correct, look at any video I have and I'll post one in the description below on how to use the info palette in Photoshop. All right, so we have this image here and this isn't a horrible image. The issue here is that sometimes taking a photograph at a different time of day, it's gonna make a huge difference, or in this case, maybe even a different day. So we can see in the background here, we have a lot of what's called atmospheric haze. Actually, a UV filter is supposed to help get rid of atmospheric haze, but it doesn't really do that. The issue here is sometimes when you're taking photographs, you just need to wait or take them at a different time of day or a different day altogether. There's not a lot you could do to fix this. So if you live in an area where you get a lot of atmospheric haze, I do here in Pennsylvania, wait for it to rain. The day after it rains, it's going to wash out all that atmospheric haze and you're going to have a lot cleaner image. All right. So we've got a whole bunch of different issues here. One, people always see beautiful trees and backgrounds and they put their subject up against them. Usually you don't want your subject actually up against a background. They do it a lot of times. Sometimes a barn wall or something can work. But in general, if you have a background, you want your subject at least four or five feet away from it. So it starts to fade out of focus, especially when you're doing a portrait. Because this looks like a whole bunch of things growing out of his head here. It's sort of distracting. The lighting was horrible. He's got all this here is making his face really dark. And then we have this guy with darker skin, dark exposure, and then wearing a white shirt. So remember, a camera can only hold 
so much dynamic range in an image and having all this dark and all this white makes it difficult for the camera to hold both values. Can we bring this out? Yes, but it's not the end of the world. The main part of this image is the movement. So the movement is this way, but once again, cut off at the elbow, cut off here, and cut off here. You do not want to cut off appendages. Plus, you're like shooting right up the guy's crotch. That looks really weird. Not something that you would generally want to do. So this could be a good image, but we just need to change a whole bunch of different things in it. A photograph isn't just taking a good looking person and putting them in front of a pretty location and snapping it. There's more to photography than meets the eye. So here's the image that I was talking about. This is actually a really good image. The lighting is beautiful, it's toned well. But if you look up here, the photographer darkened this area down. And why, well, the sun's here. And where the sun is gonna be shining through, it's just gonna be way overexposed. It's not horrible in this image, but a lot of times if you darken the area of the sky where the sun has blown it out and there's no detail, you can see it's turning gray. And as you make it darker, it just turns an even flat gray. It doesn't always look this good and it doesn't look good. And even in this image, I would leave it a little bit more blown out than it is now. But this part of the image was toned extremely well. So the next photo is we have this beautiful girl in the water, but the photograph is absolutely horrible. The color balance is way off and doesn't look good. It's way too contrasty. We've got this bright highlights in the contrast here. We've lost detail in the hand here, and we're cutting off this arm right here, which looks weird. Notice the movement of this image is this way, and then we just whoosh, right off the frame and chop this arm off. That looks weird. This arm should be going in a different direction, curved around, or having her head here so the hand goes and ends over here. So this head over here, and then we move through it. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to apply it. If you look here, we've lost all the detail here. So just because you have an attractive person doesn't mean you have a good photo. So the toning, the exposure, the composition, everything was not done well in this image. Here's another image, very pretty woman. We've got her in the snow, but we've way overexposed her jacket right here. So you can see there's detail here, but we've we just lost it and it blends into the background. It's almost like she's translucent. You can't see through. Hold your highlight detail. All right, so this is not a horrible image. This is a little bit out of focus. That's sort of an issue. Um, what we're looking at here is this line, and it's not as bad in this one as maybe some other ones that you'll see. When you do portraits of people, you don't want the horizon line to go through their head. If you're a portrait photographer, one thing you can do, and I usually have at least one ladder with me, I have a pretty tall step ladder, and this allows me to easily raise my eye level above or I can kind of squat down to get below subjects. We have this space up here, even though the horizon line's going there, we just have this little sky. This, this doesn't balance in the image. Usually we divide an image up into thirds, so the third lines would go from here and then here. So we would essentially want the sky to be this much and two thirds of it to be the ground. You don't want this like little teeny strip of spot up here just compositionally, it doesn't work that well. Here's a simple image. I'm not trying, sure what they're trying to do here, but this is one that's just a distracting background. It looks like we've got this stick that's skewing this woman through the head. It's just distracting. Uh, the rest of the composition is actually not too bad. So something like this, I would probably just break off or move or not take the photo there because it's going right through our subject and it doesn't look good. All right, so here's an image with, with a couple different issues. It looks like they actually focused here instead of the eye, which is kind of unusual. You don't want to focus on the arm. Usually you're trying to focus on the person's face or eye. So I think the focus point is off a little bit, but the exposure is really bad. She's in too much shade. You need to either overexpose this to get this to come out a little bit better. And the color balance is really wonky on this image. I would probably just move to a location or come back at a different time and photograph it when the lighting is better. So here's another image with really, really poor exposure. This is way overexposed. We've lost all the highlight here. And then they came in and increased the contrast and look at her hair and the hat. 
It looks like like just one two-dimensional flat black area. Doesn't look good. And here's one with a horizon line right through the head, just like I topped before. Compositionally, it's split right down the middle, which you don't want to do. So we've got this half sky, this half grass. We want to know what's more important, the sky or the grass. We don't want our subject's head. And we cut off their feet down here. So here we've got this little spider. The spider isn't in focus. Now, I'm sure this isn't the person's fault. Most likely people don't have macro or really good macro equipment to be able to photograph something like this little spider here. The issue here is that we just got all this dead space. So this is the interesting aspect, this shadow, this leaf, and this spider. And then we've got way too much other area. So sometimes we just need to move in. So in this case, moving in is, is really the key. Sometimes having too much negative space doesn't help an image. So we're gonna go up here to this image here. Now I had a couple images here. This one, once again, has to do with movement. So if we remember the image that I looked at before with her is this one right here, and she's looking through what I called the short side of the image. So in this, he's actually placed better where she's looking through the image a little bit more. The problem is, is this elbow. So the, the movement is this way, but this elbow points this direction. It's contradicting the, the direction that we want to move. So in this case, you know, placing arms and hands is difficult in portrait photography. This just doesn't work this well in this image because it's contradicting the movement that we have, which is this line and this line all looking in this direction. Then we have this image that the photographer used. Notice how clean and simple the background is really nice, really well done image. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about how to improve your photography. Don't forget about the Facebook group. I'll have the info posted down in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.